What's up, my beautiful babies? I'm back. It's your boy Sean. Like a house fire. Coming at you. <sighs> yeah, I've been gone for a little while. I haven't gone, but I've been I've been distant. I won't lie to you. I've been I've been distant. Anyway, yeah, I uh, yeah, I took a little took, took a little downtime. Uh, I can't I just can't stay away from you guys and gals here at CageSideSeats.com, the best damn pro wrestling community on the interwebs. But I did uh, I did step away for a little bit, and luckily. Nothing happened in the world of pro wrestling. That whew, was close. <laughs> Just kidding. Everything exploded while I was gone. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's go. Let's go through it and see where, see where it leaves us. Um, so you know, you've read the news. Going back, I mean, it seemed like a big deal. Just that Samoa Joe had showed up on NXT under the name Samoa Joe. Uh, on the same night that uh, TNA and the latest rumor that TNA was being canceled by another network was going around. Um, TNA spent the weekend spinning that, denying that, etc. And then yesterday the, the bombshell, which I don't think is overstating it, at least in relative terms, dropped that uh, Destination America, the home of TNA, Impact Wrestling, whatever they call it, uh, was going to start showing Ring of Honor Wrestling. TV as a lead-in to Impact when they moved to Wednesday nights. Uh, a lot of good reportage that started as a tweet, of all things, and then a press release, and then uh, a lot of good reportage went on, uh, including, but not limited to our own Keith Harris, about how that came to be and what it means and stuff like that. So uh, so what does it mean? What is going on? Um, you know, I, for starters, I mean, wow, that's... I didn't see it coming at all because I didn't think that Ring of Honor was looking for a cable deal, a national deal. I thought they were happy being, um, you know, filler, basically, for their syndicated stations and anyone else who wanted to pay for something to air on the weekends. They didn't really seem to care that it didn't generate a ton of ad revenue. You only have to watch one episode to see Jay Lethal say it, sell you a knee brace to know that. So I blindsided in that regard. Um, it also runs counter to what we've been hearing um, even before the cancellation news, which was that Destination America was having buyer's remorse about wanting to be in the wrestling business at all. Um, I think what this shows us, and this is, this is my opinion, is that Destination America bought into TNA thinking that it was going to be their ticket to rating success so that they could tout themselves as the fastest growing network or something along those lines. Um, you know, basically what USA and NBC gets out of WWE, which is sure we can't sell many ads on it, but hey, we can say we're the, the most watched cable network in America or whatever. So they thought they were going to get that. Uh, I guess they didn't cut a great deal though, because I guess they're spending more money on it than they wanted to because they did get ratings. They instantly became the top rated show on the network. I think if they thought that uh, Impact was going to bring over much more than it did, they were dumb, for lack of a better word. Uh, you know, if you look at the households that Spike was in versus the households that Destination America's in, the trends on impact ratings, those sorts of things, I think they're, they're doing pretty well, um, all things considered. I think if they thought they were going to bring in more like, you know, 800,000 viewers a week or something, uh, especially when they put them on Friday nights, that's not, um, that's not smart. So, um, so, what they're doing with Ring of Honor, I think, is fairly smart in that they're going to see if they can get the the same kind of numbers at very low cost to them. I, they're going to run, you know, this, I think it's 26 weeks, they're going to run this initial uh, deal is the number that I've been hearing, and they're just going to run the version that runs on the weekends on syndicated channels and that shows up online the week after. Sinclair already pays to produce that, so they're not going to sink any more money into it, see if they can get decent ratings, see if they can use that as a way to, you know, pump impact up to the next level. And, you know, why not? It's no, I think it's very little cost to them. And, uh, you know, and they, they can see if they can get the ratings out of it. Now, if they get the ratings out of ROH and there's not much of a change in TNA, I think TNA is still dead because it costs too much money to produce. And they can probably put a little bit of money into, into Ring of Honor and make that a much better looking product um, and probably get the same return. So, 
So like I said, I think it's a smart play. Uh, I remain surprised that um, that Ring of Honor is doing it, but you know, I, it's an indication on their part that they want to be more than just a, you know a feeder system for WWE. I think the success of their shows with New Japan probably emboldened them a little bit to do something like this. But you know, I think maybe this was in the plans all along. It's surprising how quiet they kept it, and that it runs counter to what we thought both Ring of Honor and Destination America were doing, but, you know, there's somebody at, over at in Discovery, Discovery Networks that that is championing, championing wrestling programming, or they wouldn't be doing this. They wouldn't have done the TNA deal to begin with. They wouldn't be doing this now, so that's interesting. Um, you know, what does it mean for TNA? Where did TNA go wrong? Um, that's there's books to be written on that I guess I mean for me I still think their biggest mistake was not completely rebranding themselves and starting from ground zero when they moved to DA to Destination America I think they should have called it something else I think they should have you know start, had a tournament for their first champion or, or something I mean they did some different things um, but it was still very similar booking I mean, it was a good show but it was the same show with you know with just sort of a back to basics approach, uh, it was still WWE light, um, which something like, you know, for the most part, Ring of Honor avoids. Uh, for something like Lucha Underground definitely avoids, although that's a whole other production model. Because uh, you know, I've heard reports that they're going to get picked up for a second season, but they are they have to be hemorrhaging cash. Um, so I mean, that's a whole other topic, though. What they need to do, and I want one that I think I've covered, but my memory is getting bad in my old age. Um, so that's the I mean, so that's the main thing that I think TNA did wrong. Um, it sucks for a bunch of reasons that Impact might go away, and I really think you know probably will at least in their current form. They may become something like House of Hardcore, where they run shows overseas to fulfill those contracts, and you know maybe a few house shows here and there. But I think this is kind of the death knell for them as a as a major player. Um, it sucks that. Uh, that some of those wrestlers are going to struggle to make as much money or as steady money. It definitely sucks for whoever's behind the scenes. Um, you know, but that company had a ton of chances, and uh, and Dixie Carter, who supposedly made her fame as a marketing executive and rose to a presidency in whatever firm she was with, uh, she never figured uh, she never figured the marketing of this one out. Um, and that's, you know, that's going to be the legacy. Hopefully, it's just the legacy for Impact and it doesn't screw over everybody else who might ever want to get a national TV contract again. Um, because I think she has, she's definitely alienated some executives at two major cable companies in the United States, at Discovery and Viacom, which owns Spike. Um, and that's, that's, I mean, she definitely she didn't play this hand well. There's reports going around, there's memos going around that maybe she tried to, like, go behind some Destination America's executives back to a Discovery Communications executive and yada, yada, yada. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire a lot of times, and it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like she did a great job running this. So, um, so I think that's going to end up, you know, that's going to be the, the end of, of impact as a major player, I just I hope it doesn't affect um, Lucha Underground getting renewed, even you know Jeff Jarrett getting a contract. Um, it obviously hasn't affected Ring of Honor so far, those sorts of things. Um, but I don't think it's not good for any of those things. It's uh, I don't I think this this makes it a much tougher sell for anybody else, WWE included, um, to say. You know, look how great we are as a television product because, you know, the only successful model for a television product is WWE, and even that has some serious downside. It makes Vince's decision to go to the streaming service look really good, too, because that's a way for them to, to get that revenue without having to rely on advertising dollars, which apparently is a real big problem for wrestling. So, um... So that's that. So I, you know, I think it's really bad for TNA. I think it's pretty bad for wrestling. I think it's really interesting for Ring of Honor. We'll see where it goes for them. Um, 
like I said, I would love to see them put a little bit more into production values and keeping some other guys around. I think some their two biggest weaknesses right now are, are that it looks like it's filmed in a high school gym by college students. And actually, that's probably not fair because NXT is filmed by college students, I think, and it looks better. Um, and that they don't keep, you know, they don't have their big guys under contract, so they can't really write a championship, a believable championship story about AJ Styles, about Samoa Joe, because those guys are not committed to them beyond appearances, um, you know, date by date contracts kind of things. So it would be nice to see them step up and change those two things and see what can happen. Um, I'd really love to see them further their partnership with New Japan, which is something that I haven't heard talked about a lot, is that, you know, New Japan has that show with Access TV, which is owned by somebody else entirely, so I don't know how that factors into things, um, but that's another, I mean, that's, I think that's the model that Ring of Honor, that Destination America is looking at here. There's some cheap programming that we can plug in. We know people will watch, even if we can't get um, anybody who wants to sell things to those people who are watching. Um... So that's, you know, that's that should be interesting, and it'll be interesting to see if that grows. The best case scenario for for the business would be that, you know, Ring of Honor thrives in that 8 o'clock slot, and it drives people to stick around and watch TNA from 10 to 11, and or 9, whatever it would be, 9 to 11, and that, you know, we really start to get some some growing promotions with uh, that are changing the perceptions of, of advertisers and audiences and things like that. I don't know. We'll see if that happens. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, and then you throw in NXT in the mix, which is, you know, the, I, we might... The Samoa Joe contract is fascinating because we have to see what that means. He is scheduled to be on TV for Ring of Honor, but that was when it was going to be on, you know, WJZ at 11.30 on a Saturday night, not on Destination America opposite... NXT, where he's also um, featured. So, you know, how talent affects that, how NXT's traveling affects that, uh, that's all all interesting questions. So we're, it's a really exciting time, I think, to be a fan. I think it's a scary time to be in the wrestling business. Um, and, uh, but I guess, I mean, probably not for most talent. I mean, if you've, especially if you've got your own following, if you're Samoa Joe, if you're AJ Styles, if you're Jay Briscoe, um, it's a good time. You know, and and hopefully that that will continue to be the case. Um, so we'll see, and and that's all stuff that we've talked about on here before about you know wrestling becoming cool again. Um, I just I, we got to figure out um, how to get over this hump of of the advertising thing, or or maybe it is maybe it's the streaming model, maybe it's um, web based, but even that that comes down to ad dollars too eventually. Um, so. It will be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, stay tuned, folks, because shit just got weird. Um, and, I, and I think a good way, but I don't know. Um, we'll see. Uh, TNA has is, is got some problems. Uh, I don't think, I think they are definitely at the uh, the whims of Destination America. And, and I don't know, they could, I think Ring of Honor is fine either way. Uh, but I don't know the TNA is fine either way, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes, and uh, yeah, it's it'll be a fun time to be a fan. Watch what happens and all that jazz, and you know, no matter what happens, we will just we'll keep talking about it, cage side seats, and and we'll deal with it.